In this day and age, there are many groups which are frequently accused of being a cult. Some of these groups are religious, while others are just spiritual, some are political, commercial, or self-development focused, some have thousands or millions of members all across the world, while others have just a couple dozen all living in the same secluded community. But one factor that the majority of these so-called cults have in common is that their leaders are usually men. Jim Jones of the People's Temple, Charles Manson of The Family, David Miscavige of Scientology. But nestled in the foothills of Mount Rainier, just outside of the rural town of Yelm, Washington, there lies an 80-acre compound for something called Ramtha's School of Enlightenment. Their leader is a 76-year-old woman named Jay-Z Knight, who claims that she is the unique channeler of a 35,000-year-old Lemurian warrior called Ramtha the Enlightened One. Ramtha uses her to teach self-development by combining ancient wisdom with neuroscience and quantum physics. Students are taught telepathy, how to see the past and the future, and how to change their physical body just through changing their conscious awareness. As one could expect with just that small amount of information already, Ramtha's School of Enlightenment is often called a cult, not only by critics, but by many ex-members, including Jay-Z's old bodyguard and even her ex-husband. Now, I'm not going to personally call it a cult. It may be one, it may not be one, you know, cult influence exists on a spectrum. It's not just easily, this is a cult, this isn't a cult. It's a lot more complex than that, but I'm just letting you know how other people view it. This is a group that is very widely considered to be a cult, and you can decide for yourself whether you agree with that or not. But I think that this whole story about the school, Jay-Z, Ramtha is super interesting, and I hope you feel the same way when watching this video. And I will just disclaim real quick, I'm probably going to slip up and call Ramtha Ramtha because that's how I thought it was pronounced at first and so now it's like stuck in my head, but I apologize. It is pronounced Ramtha or you can call him Ram for short. Now there is a lot of information out there about this group, like there's so many different things to talk about. I could probably make like a five hour long video about them and I'm not going to, but I just want you to want to let you know this is like an introduction to them like this is just scraping the surface about them and because of that i also wanted to talk about them more in the future and so i'm going to be doing a patreon only live stream this coming friday july 22nd at 7 p.m central time so if you want to if you're interested in that you can subscribe to the patreon three dollars 33 us a month um but i could also do like a follow-up part two video on youtube as well if you guys are interested because there's the, like i said it, there's so much information i feel like i'm barely saying anything but yet i have like nine pages of a full script so in this video i want to share just starting out with some like basic facts about them and then kind of go into who jay-z is who ramtha is supposedly um and what some of the school's teachings and beliefs and practices are and then some predictions that ramtha has made and we'll finish up by talking about ex-members and some groups that ex-members have formed. <laughs> so Ramtha's School of Enlightenment, I'll also call it the school or RSC for short, um, it was established in 1988 and it's not an actual school. I don't know how they came up with the name. Um, their members are referred to as students, but the outsiders, the local town people, they call them the Ramsters apparently, but I'm not sure if the students refer to themselves as that. Um, but the, the school is also not a church or a religion. Uh, according to RSC, but some notable students or ex-students. Um, the first is Joe Dispenza. That's the person who I originally came across this group through. I made a video about him. He's like a new age guru and he hasn't been affiliated with them for probably like two decades. Um, but then also three RSC members wrote, produced, and directed the popular new age film called What the Bleep Do We Know? I'm not sure if two of them are still in the school or not, but one of them actually left the school and then joined Nexium, which is another, uh, it's an MLM. It was, it was an MLM that was frequently accused of being a cult. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Just a little side note. Probably the most well-known person that I've seen be affiliated with the group, although I don't know to what extent, in what way, if she still is today, but actress Selma Hayek uh, has 
I think at least spoken at some kind of Ramtha event. So on this 80 acre property that they have, which they call it the ranch, Jay-Z lives there. She has a 13,000 square foot home, which I believe was converted from like some kind of horse stable because this property originally was her and her ex-husband's property for horse breeding. They weren't in the horse breeding business, but then when that wasn't going so swell, I guess they switched over to this. <laughs> um, but basically, she lives there, then there's other buildings. The main one for the events that they hold there for the students is called the Great Hall, and it can hold up to 1,000 people at a time. So RC holds many events throughout the year for students to come. It's not open to the public, but if you sign up online and pay for an event, you can come in, stay for the day. I am not 100% sure if there's any overnight events. There might have been, like I remember seeing something about that, but I honestly couldn't find it and so I don't want to say it because I, I can't provide a source for it. But their site states that over 100,000 people have attended Ramtha events since 1988 when it started, but I suspect most of those people are not still in it. For example, it was reported in 2008 that there were 6,000 current students. Um, so I'm assuming today, I mean, 2008 was quite a while ago, but I assume you could estimate, let's say like 4,000 to 12,000 people in the school that are current students today. Um, the school also holds different retreats, classes, and workshops throughout the world. Um, some of them are open to the public, but some of them require students to have like attended certain past events in order to gain access to these. But yeah, they're like all throughout like Central, South America, Asia, Europe, blah, blah, blah. I don't have any current numbers for how much money the school makes. Um, it was estimated in 2007. Not sure if this was a reliable source, but I saw that it was estimated the events made them $2.5 million and they made a further $2.6 million off of product sales for that year. And then as for what they teach, we'll get more into that later, like I said, but what they call the four cornerstones, so like the main things that they're promoting, I guess, are the statement, you are God, the mandate to make known the unknown, the concept that consciousness and energy creates the nature of reality, and the challenge to conquer yourself. So let's get into who Jay-Z Knight is. So she was born in 1946 in Roswell, New Mexico as Judith Darlene Hampton. Then when she got married as an adult to Jeffrey Knight, her last name changed. And then I'm not sure if this was legally or she just decided to kind of casually change her middle name to Zebra, but that's how we get Judy Zebra Jay-Z Knight. <laughs> so interesting, but creative, I guess. Some sources say that she's been married and divorced three times. One says five times, another says six times. I'm not really sure, it's probably three. Um, and she does have a child, at least one child, with one of them. On the website, it says this about her. Historians and religious experts who have studied her life's work call Jay-Z Knight the great American channel and recognize her as one of the most charismatic and compelling spiritual leaders of the modern age, which arguably is completely made up, but I can't say for certain. And you can, I wanted to say that right up front, so you can kind of decide for yourself if you, if you think she fits that description. <laughs> About 45 years ago is when Jay-Z uh, claims she magically gained the powers to start channeling this ancient warrior called Ramtha, and so basically the way that he manifests for them is like he speaks through her. So at the school, she'll be talking up on stage, but it's not like, like it won't be her technically. Like the students will refer, will refer to it as Ramtha is with us and Ramtha is speaking, whatever, but it's her and she's just talking in a more masculine way and with like a different accent than her natural accent, basically. But so what's interesting about this is uh, it's claimed that Ramtha was, he lived as this human, like I said, 35,000 years ago on this continent called Lemuria, which is proposed to have existed in the Indian Ocean, so like south of India and west of Indonesia and Australia, and this is not a confirmed continent to have existed, it's just a proposed one, um, but I find it really interesting that when Ram Ramtha is speaking through Jay-Z, he has kind of like just a, a very weird accent, not one that you would expect from that area that would be like super ancient, like 35,000 years ago. Like his accent is a mix of like American and like 
British or just European in general, like it sounds very modern. I mean, just the word Ramtha doesn't sound ancient, which doesn't mean it's not, but it's like Ramtha. It just sounds like a nasally American word. <laughs> Hopefully I'm able to play some clips. Uh, I don't want to get copyright struck though, but I would say like the best way to describe Ramtha's accent <laughs> is just like a really bad voice actor playing some kind of character for like a low budget animated kids movie. So this is what Jay-Z's normal speaking voice sounds like. When Ramtha appeared to me in 1977, and then began that incredible year from February on. And this is what Ramtha's voice sounds like. But an experience that maybe it took that many days for us to change our mind and to have a different day. Is it possible to have mind over matter? Baby, the brain is king. The body is the kingdom. So a little more on Ramtha from Jay-Z's website. She writes, Ramtha is an ascended master teacher who learned in his lifetime the unlimited potential of our minds for creating reality and the extraordinary in our lives. Ramtha lived as a human being on Earth 35,000 years ago. In that lifetime, he discovered the true nature of the human person, the power of the mind, and the malleable nature of physical reality. Through his study of the nature of reality, he achieved the supreme convergence of spirit and matter and became an ascended master. Though the school is located on the property that it's located on because Jay-Z and her ex-husband already owned that land for their horse business, the school also claims that the region was actually part of ancient Lemuria during Ramtha's lifetime before he migrated to Atlantis and freed his people from tyranny at age 14 and then went on to conquer two-thirds of the world uh, at, at the head of an army of 2.5 million people. <laughs> After being run through with a sword during battle, Ramtha sat on a rock and meditated for seven years, became enlightened, taught his, vibrate, <laughs> taught his body to vibrate at a high frequency, and ascended like Jesus. So that I will say was like from a report about them. I couldn't find their exact quote on that. So like take it with a grain of salt also. Same with this. I also long ago when I first researched just a little bit about this school, when I was making my Joe Dispenza video, I read that they also claimed that their school was located where it was in Yelm because of chemtrails basically and just the flight patterns across like the u.s and whatever like they were in an area that didn't have any flights going overhead or that many um but i don't rem i can't remember the source for that so i'm not sure if it was like on their website or somebody just said that about them so jay-z has been in a couple controversies i mean the main one is that she's considered to be a cult leader of course it's a very controversial thing not really something people uh look up to. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about a little more controversies regarding her in the school and like the ex-members part, but I just wanted to talk about this one right now because um, it's just related to her and not like the school's teachings basically. So there was a video, I, honestly I didn't write it down, but I want to say it was around like 2008, that was released by two ex-members, Virginia Coverdale and David McCarthy, where basically they they recorded this webcast from when they were members, I assume. They recorded it and then they eventually released it once they were no longer members anymore. And she makes some quite offensive remarks in this video. But you can't find the video anymore because she sued both Virginia and David and also this um, other like platform that reposted it called the Freedom Foundation. She sued all of them. She got the video removed for copyright infringement. So I don't believe that this video is possible to be found anymore. If it is, it's like deep on like some kind of forum. <laughs> like you definitely can't find it on YouTube. So in this video, she was apparently drunk and speaking on stage to her students. And she starts out by talking about Jews in which she says about them, F God's chosen people. I think they've earned enough cash to have paid their way out of the goddamn gas chambers by now. Which is just like, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> like, And then she also says that Mexicans breed like rabbits and are poison. That all gay men were once Catholic priests 
and that organic farmers have bad hygiene, which is comparably tame compared to the other ones, <laughs> obviously. Um, but basically, this was a pretty big controversy in their local community. Like, she is very involved in the Yelm, Washington, and I think it's called Thurston County community, and she gives a lot of money to different democratic political parties and candidates and whatever. And the situation was so big that uh, people must have reached out to these people that have received money from them and they ended up kind of having to like say that they didn't support what she said and some of them had to like donate their money. Um, like somebody, one of them donated to like a Latino nonprofit or things like that. It's very interesting the things that I've read about her being like involved in the community like politically and then also just talking about her, uh, the economic influence that she has on the town, it's a really small town, it's like 10,000 people, Yelm is, um, but she's bringing in like, I mean she brought in like 5 million dollars in 2007 and so I wonder if that's kind of like used as a way to keep the people, keep the authorities from like checking in on them because she is helping out the community economically and like has these political ties or something like that. I think it's an interesting thing that I could maybe go into in like a live stream or future video, although like I will say I'm not educated on politics, like just political terms like don't make sense to me. So the obvious observation <laughs> that like most people would make, even those who believe in like channeling and mediums and psychics, I think still like this would be an instance of where most people wouldn't believe it. Most people would think it's either a lie or she is hearing voices, or there's just something else going on. Um, but in response to this, basically, the school says that they actually, like, they've ruled that out. They say, scientific techniques now exist to study the phenomenon of channeling by Jay-Z Knight and to rule out the possibility of fraud. These scientific studies took place in 1996 when a distinguished panel of 12 scholars comprised of neuroscientists, psychologists, sociologists, and religious experts studied Jay-Z Knight before, during, and after channeling Rantha. After they conducted their scientific research studies using the latest technology and equipment available, they concluded that the readings taken from Jay-Z Knight's autonomic nervous system responses, which autonomic means like involuntary or unconscious, were so dramatic that they categorically ruled out any possibility of conscious fakery, schizophrenia, or multiple personality disorder. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that literally none of that is true. If it was, maybe studies took place in 1996, but like the conclusions that they talk about right here are not remotely close to it. If this happened, where's the link to the study? It's nowhere because it probably doesn't exist in the first place. So let's go into kind of a very basic overview um, about the RSE teachings and beliefs. So the school is definitely got some new agey vibes, of course. It's very self-development focused. Um, they have some kind of like right-leaning beliefs, but also like I said, Jay-Z has donated to many democratic candidates and parties, so I don't really know where they lie on that scale. But they also think that they're combining ancient wisdom with quantum physics and neuroscience, which I definitely disagree with, uh, as you've seen my videos and I've talked about quantum physics so much, uh, in terms of how new agey people like to use it. Um, but they also, another thing, just like I think I put in the title, they kind of promote doomsday prepping. Ramtha believes that there are going to be plagues and natural disasters and government corruption all these different things but mainly like the natural disasters like you basically like you need to first of all if you can move out of a city move to somewhere with higher elevation and start growing your own food also make some sort of bunker um and put supplies gold he's very very big into gold uh hoarding <laughs> and hoard some food in there you know your canned goods so when the natural disasters happen, you're safe and you want to have at least enough of those things in the bunker for two years, he promotes. According to Jay-Z's website, the school's approach is unique and innovative, combining many threads of contemporary scientific research that support the principle that God lives in within each of us. 
The physical body and the material world are only one aspect of the real world. They are the product of a broader reality, constituted by consciousness and energy. The human body is best described as consciousness and energy creating the nat nature of reality. We are divine beings by nature. Thus, a spiritual life that incorporates the material ro world rather than rejecting it is accessible to everyone. So students of Ramtha School of Enlightenment are taught the following concepts and disciplines of the great work, capital G, capital W. <laughs> um, but I guess these are all like the big things that they're teaching and talking about. So the nature of consciousness and energy, they're really big into that. She has trademarked, she's trademarked a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go over that like right at the end of this section, but she's, oh my gosh. She's trademarked the term consciousness and energy and the abbreviation for that C and E, which I don't know, like, I don't know a lot about trademarks, but I'm like, how can you, con how can you trademark such a generic phrase like that? I'm, I, I'm not educated on it, so I don't know. Another one of the fundamental concepts and disciplines is the redefinition of God as the observer in quantum physics. Oh boy. <sighs> The observer in quantum physics is like exactly what new age woo-woo people take from quantum physics to apply it to their new age beliefs that literally like quantum physics does it not have to anything to do with at all. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to limit how much I talk about quantum physics because it comes up in all my videos. If you know my videos, you know, <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I've talked about it in other videos. So if you ever go watch my other videos, if you haven't seen them, probably hear me talk about it at some point. Okay, anyways, the nature of spirit and matter, the story of involution and or evolution, the mystery of the soul and life after death. So they believe in the soul and uh, life after death. So reincarnation, I believe. Um, who is responsible for personal destiny? Can it be changed? The chemistry and neurobiology of the brain and the creation of reality. Now I'm gonna bet that they don't use this science either in the accurate way. They twist it to fit their own beliefs like a lot of these popular kind of sketchy new age groups do. So those are kind of basic ones. I didn't really have much to say on these next ones. I'll go into more depth about what they say about them. So disciplines of C and E, which again, consciousness and energy is what that means. And the torsion process or torsion, torsion, I don't know, um, that broaden and re refine <laughs> powers of the mind. So they say about this, that C and E is the fundamental discipline of manifestation taught at RSC. Through this breathing tech or breath technique, students learn to shift to an analogical state of mind and create a new reality. Everything that exists originated in consciousness and manifests through the modulation of its energy into mass. Okay. I don't know if I'm just stupid, but that made no sense to me. <laughs> I get that like some spiritual things that, like I'm not going to understand because I'm simply not aware of them. I'm just hearing about them for the first time. But I do feel like a lot of people who make kind of like courses or just talk about spirituality in general in a way that they're like trying to get people to buy something or whatever. I think a lot of them use terms that and phrases and just speak in ways that like sound very smart and wise and like advanced even though they don't have as much meaning and they they aren't as productive ways to speak as that just talking in a way that most people can understand like manifest through the modulation of its energy into mass i mean it's just like what um but yeah so they're into like love attraction manifestation stuff um breath work i guess the breath technique would be would count as breath work here we get into the more interesting ones okay so the discipline of remote viewing, the past, present, or future. The Rantha School of Enlightenment teaches students to capitalize on their natural mental abilities. According to Rantha's disciplines, we have direct control of how, over how our lives play out. Using the remote viewing technique, you can see the past, present, and future of anything at any distance at any time. I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> I don't know if it's meant in a more abstract way or if they literally think you can like project your mind to the 1500s and I don't know what was going on in the 1500s. See whatever war was going on somewhere like or the future. That That's just obviously false because it's like if, if they can see the future, if these students can see the future, then Rantha can definitely see the future. And Rantha 
promotes himself as somebody who can see the future. He makes these predictions, but like any good fake predictor, he always keeps them very vague. As you'll see in the next part, like he's not a good predictor. Like he's good at faking it. Like to people who are already convinced he exists, like sure they might be good, but like any skeptical person who like knows what to look out for when it comes to predictions, like his predictions are so vague. If he can see the future, he should know when these predictions are gonna happen, but he never knows. He just says soon, someday, in the future, blah, blah, blah. Next is telepathy and sending and receiving. Communication from one mind directly to another from a distance. Learn to access information using the faculties of the mo the midbrain. I wish they went into more depth about this. I mean, I'm sh of course they do, like in the events and speeches and whatnot. Telepathy is a very extreme thing to promote and still like try to get people to take you seriously you know what i mean another thing they do is called field work the ability to focus on a single thought for a period of time the remarkable discipline that demonstrates how focused observation affects the environment field work also teaches you how to hold a vision and intentionally mold reality to create a greater destiny so i feel like that's kind of still like law of attraction vibes you know then manifesting something out of nothing Healing with the blue body, this is a trademarked term, blue body. It is the body that belongs to the fourth plane of existence, the bridge consciousness, and the ultraviolet frequency band. Do any of those terms make sense to any random person who's going to come across the website? No. But they say them anyways, because <laughs> it sounds very, very far advanced. Anyways, the blue body disciplines lift the student's conscious awareness to the fourth plane and stimulate the fourth seal for the purpose of healing or changing the physical body. Um, so this is kind of, I'm assuming, like mentally healing yourself. Like if you have some kind of a disease, this is promoted as being something that you can, you can do these certain things with your conscious awareness in order to change your physical body. Now that... As you know, if you see my videos, I think that's a very dangerous thing to promote. Joe Dispenza, he was in this group. I'm not sure if he got this from them or he already believed it and attracted him to them. I, I can't really remember the exact time frame for him, but it's like he is another person that's really big in New Age that promotes that your mind can heal you of illnesses, basically. Twilight, a visualization process during sleep, is a discipline taught by Rantha in which the student Students learn to put their bodies in a catatonic state similar to deep sleep, yet retaining their conscious awareness in order to access their deep subconscious, repair the physical body, change undesirable or no longer needed patterns of thinking and behavior, induce lucid dreaming or out-of-body experiences. So when it comes to this one, I can see how this would be considered an aspect of the school that makes it a little cult-like, you know what I mean? Like teaching people how to go into catatonic states, uh, out-of-body experiences, like not that that's, if you have an out-of-body experience, like that's culty, but it's just like when a group is like trying to do all these things, it could be seen that way. It could, it could be a totally fine practice. It, maybe it's not though. Like it's, it's hard to know with just a little information that I have right now that I'm talking about in this video. Um, but then they have other things that are also called disciplines that weren't in that first list that I talked about. So the first one is called the neighborhood walk. <laughs> This exercise offers the power to change your life, intentionally shut off old habits and limitations, and then engage reality through your newly activated connections. So, very vague. I think they're just like going for walks outside. I think that's what this means, honestly. And then another one is Gladys. <laughs> Every cell in your body has a housekeeper that Jay-Z affectionately calls Gladys. Your cells respond to every thought. Therefore, you can influence your health and vitality by how you think. Interesting. Create your day. The technique created by Rantha in 1992 that was popularized by the movie What the Bleep Do We Know? The student learns to alter the day before it starts by intentionally modifying their neurological state of mind with a plan of experiences for the day. This technique is exclusively taught at Rantha's School of Enlightenment because... It is trademarked. The term, the phrase create your day is trademarked. <laughs> Analogical archery, broaden and refine the focused power of the mind, blindfolded. So yeah, basically they're having people do archery, but with a blindfold on 
in order to refine your ability to focus, I guess, which honestly, that's kind of cool. <laughs> I'll give it to him on that one. That's interesting. Um, I mean, hopefully they're taking safety precautions so people aren't, you know, whipping the bow around <laughs> blindfolded, but Another one is mind as matter. What you think matters. Mind is the product of streams of consciousness and energy acting on the brain to create holographic thought forms. A well-trained mind extends beyond the brain and body to become the environment. What does that mean? Your mind ex extends beyond the body, like creates an aura around you. And lastly, this is another one that I think is a little cool, but it also might be dangerous. Um, it's called the tank. <laughs> Students are taught to find the entry to a labyrinth while blindfolded and then navigate through it without touching the walls or using the senses. The training enhances one's ability to make a choice with confidence, even in the midst of chaos. So like I said, I've heard things, I don't have links to them, like I didn't write them down, but I remember reading stories about like how like people could bump into each other and it was a little bit dangerous. Um, but if it was done in a safe way, I actually think this is kind of like a cool thing, like learning to navigate through a maze and just like remembering it so well to where you like practice it enough to get to a point where you don't even like bump into walls or anything. I honestly think that's pretty cool. But okay, so like all of, of all those words that I just talked about and a couple that I didn't mention, these are the words or phrases that she has trademarked, okay? C and E, consciousness and energy, blue body, twilight, the neighborhood walk, Gladys, torsion process, create your day, analogical archery, mind as matter, fieldwork, the tank, Ramtha, Ramtha dialogues, become a remarkable life, and the grid. And it's just like, how can you, how can you trademark the word twilight? How can you trademark um, field work? Like it's, I don't get it. I mean, I understand that trademarks kind of like only work in like, like if you trademark something, you trademark it for like a certain type of con or product or service that you're selling, but still it's so weird. I don't know. So let's move on to talking about some of Ramtha's predictions, the ones that are like listed on their website and whatever. Um, I There's definitely been a lot more that he's made over the decades. He's really big into making predictions and honestly, like, I don't have a problem with that. I, because it's, I think it's kind of cute and like admirable to see somebody have and maintain a passion despite them not being good at it or trying to improve at all. Like you don't have to be good at everything that you do in life. Sometimes you can just do things for fun. And sure, it makes it a little scummy when it's like e people look at you as this supreme being basically and every prediction that you make, like they might they're gonna believe it wholeheartedly and it's gonna lead them to making possibly big changes in their lives. Um, that does make it a little bad, but yeah, what can you do? Just to be clear, when I'm listing like the years, those are the years that he made the predictions, not when he's saying they're supposed to come true. Any good predictor knows that you do not ever say when something's going to happen because that is how you fail since, in my opinion, they're all making stuff up. So in 2011, he said there will be an island in the Atlantic with a volcano on it that's going to blow up and drown the eastern seaboard of the US, which I honestly didn't know what that is. It's basically the East Coast, <laughs> including Washington DC and all the seaboard to the Strait of Gibraltar in Europe. He has a ton of predictions and beliefs about the New World Order, viruses, vaccines, plagues, and natural disasters. This is where, like I said, the doomsday prepping comes in, stock up on food and gold. So he has like these certain views on gold. First of all, he has predictions about Trump and the Federal Reserve, which like I don't understand that kind of stuff. So it's like, I'm not gonna go into it, but he believes that everyone should be getting gold bars because he thinks that our money will someday have basically no value but gold will. Gold has always, it's been around for a long time and it's just gonna continue to do good, that's what he thinks. So he says, this, I love this like conspiratorial quote, it's so funny, uh, it sounds like something out of a movie. He says, everything is in place for the toppling of governments. Everything is in place to remove your purses from you and substitutes weekly introduced until through public orientation, you cry out for the sophisticated system of technology to do your bookkeeping. There will be no money. Gold will have its frenzy before that time. Everything is in place. The plague is mutating and they are bringing on more. The underground cities are done and stocked and fields of wheat grow 
where the sun does not shine. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it's so overdramatic. Earlier, you might remember me saying that he thinks that people should like move to higher elevation areas. And so I'm guessing at least part of the reason for that is that in 2010, he said that scientists lie and say that the ocean levels are going to rise 17 inches in 100 years, but it's actually going to be 200 feet and soon. <laughs> I do appreciate that at least these people are not like climate change deniers. They do seem conscious of the environment, but it's like, okay, he doesn't give a time frame for when sea levels are going to rise in 200 years, but just based on the phrasing of it, I feel like he means in less than 100 years. And like, I don't know because it's like any information that I would have on this stuff would obviously be from the lying scientists, but I honestly feel like it's possibly not possible for sea, le sea, sea levels to rise 200 feet in less than 100 years like i guess he's saying that like he believes that these uh global natural disasters are gonna happen maybe like something extreme could cause that but just like naturally like the icebergs melting um eh, that's not possible <laughs> like another prediction it's listed in the prediction section but it's it's not a prediction like he he said that we should grow our own food mainly due to drought reasons and guess what? An expert just came out and said and recommended the same thing. The website says, who told us 30 years ago to grow our own food? Ramtha. It's like, wow, I mean, that really is something. Like, that is concrete evidence that he's real. That That is solid confirmation. Because how else would it have been possible for somebody to recommend to grow your own food? Then one single expert just said the same thing. So it, like, it's just stupid like that's not a prediction that's just like good advice that like most people would agree with so in 2011 he predicted that there would be a virus manufactured for the purpose of distributing vaccines which is a common obviously covid conspiracy um and so since he's this is put on the website as if like this is a prediction that has come true basically but it's like he makes a, he specifically states that this virus will not come from China, which is really interesting. Um, so it's like maybe maybe he was referring to some small virus, which seems like a dumb prediction to make. Um, but like the only other like big viruses that we've seen since 2011 are Ebola and Zika, which I don't think they came from Northern Europe. Um, but it's just interesting that he would put this on the website and like if you didn't hear the part about him saying it's not going to come from China, you would expect that he's talking about COVID. But he he specifically has to say that. That's why you don't get specific with, with predictions because then you end up with stuff like that. The best predictions are vague, are easily possible to happen or be perceived to happen, and have no stated time frame. So it's like I have no psychic abilities. I cannot channel anyone. I don't have conspiratorial thinking, yet I can also predict that there will be a new virus in the future. There will be inflation. There will be a natural disaster. People will see or think they see UFOs. Like, there will be a recession. I mean, all this stuff is like, these are like common predictions that people make and it's like, duh. <laughs> Obviously, those things are gonna happen. If you never say a date for when things are gonna happen, then it's like, you can never be proven wrong because they could just happen after somebody dies, basically. Um, but I guess when it comes to things like if you say, there won't be a war in Canada in 2025, and then there is one, then it's like you can be proven wrong. But most predictions that people are making are like unfalsifiable um, because they could always just happen in 500 years. <laughs> he predicted in 2001 that there is a ninth planet in our solar system um, that beings came to Earth from to jumpstart our genetic evolution long ago. He believes that this prediction was confirmed, or the website says it was confirmed basically by this article that talks about two scientists in 2016 who thought they found what might be a planet that might lie beyond Pluto in the Cooper belt. I actually don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but to my knowledge, this has not been confirmed to be a planet. I feel, I mean, this was like six years ago, so they probably confirmed that it hasn't been one, but like I, could, I couldn't find that much information on it other than this article. He says that olive oil is good and healthy, and then the website uh, cites a study that they say shows a compound in olive oil causes cancer cell death. Again, that's such a basic claim. Oh, olive oil is healthy. Wow, like that. Like, that's you're not the first person that said that. This one, I would say, is like 
the closest to being impressive, even though it's like, it's still not, but he claimed that Trump would see two silver discs while he's flying in his jet. And then a year later, there's a video um, that they post on the website. There's a YouTube video of him. It's like a video, I'll, I'll put it on the screen, maybe. <laughs> um, but you can see the jet that he takes off in, and then you can see this silver disc looking thing in the sky flying by the other way from the jet. It goes by super fast. You can't really see it for that long or that clearly. And then a little bit later in the video, there's a darker flying object that also zooms past it the other way. But it's like, honestly, they, they're going so fast, they're so far away, it's so blurry, the quality of them being so far is not good. Like, it could just be a plane. Like, if I had just seen this, I would have been like, oh, there's planes flying by. You know what I mean? Rantha, of course, believes that some people have psychic abilities, and there's a Daily Mail article used to confirm this, where they talk about some studies that were done um, that apparently supported psychic abilities, though it does state that there are other scientists that don't agree with the findings, and one guy tried to replicate these studies, a scientist tried to replicate the studies, and he wasn't able to get the same results. I would say that if these studies actually did um, like confirm psychic abilities, they would have been a lot more well known. So those are some of the predictions that they put on the website. I'm sure they cherry picked them. I'm sure he's I'm sure he's made some predictions that like were objectively wrong and of course tons that haven't come true yet. But let's move on to talking about the X members and some of the drama surrounding that and just people people who have been in the group what they think about it you know so there's two main groups that i was able to find that are like um created for x members to basically get help and have a community and be able to relate to other people who are going through the same thing as them and like recover from their time in there a lot of people talk about it as being kind of almost traumatic in a way or they it they like they need recovery and that's very common for people who leave even like certain religions or spiritual groups is it's hard like it is hard to kind of rejoin that's not the word i'm looking for but like rejoin back into normal life and kind of reflect on your experiences and maybe the lies that you feel like you were told or the things that you were led to believe that now you look back and you're like oh my gosh how could i believe that so the first group the one that i hear about the most um is called life after rantha school of enlightenment or lars I'm not able to find a website or a Facebook page for them anymore based on things that I've read. They probably had one in the past, but they were mainly an in-person, like a public in-person meeting type group. Back in 2008, I know that, like that's a time that I can confirm that they had meetings, but it was for former students who basically live near Yelm. So not sure how active they were online. I found another group that is active online still to this day called Enlighten Me Free. They have a website and a forum. Um, the forum still has posts from like just probably a couple days ago, um, but I definitely saw like June of this year. Um, and so that's, the forum is something that I think I'd like to go over in my live stream. I'd like to go over the forum and some lawsuits because I'm not really gonna get into the lawsuits um, in this video. But if you want to check them out, you can join the Patreon for live stream or I'll link them down below in my sources as always so you can go and like read through them if you want. So some people who are critics of Jay-Z and the school are her former personal bodyguard. His name is Glenn Cunningham and then her ex-husband Jeff Knight. So starting off with Cunningham and some things that I've heard him say or read about his experience. Uh, something he says is that some people would come to the school events hoping to be cured of certain diseases. Now these are all alleged, okay? <laughs> Not making any factual statements, but there was one woman who he says came to an event with cancer and Rantha, aka Jay-Z, hugged her and told her that she was free of the disease, but she wasn't and later she unfortunately ended up dying with cancer. Um, some quotes from him, he says, I mean, this, this is, these are kind of interesting. He says, I met Jay-Z too fast, which I don't know what that means, but he says, once you meet Jay-Z, you know Ramtha isn't real, um, which I've been thinking since I saw that, like, he's pro obviously spoken to a lot of members and ex-members, and so I wonder if it's a common or frequent belief 
in the group to believe that Ramtha isn't real but still value the teachings and still value Jay-Z and whatever. Um, but it's very interesting that he says that maybe it was just his personal opinion or there's a couple people who felt that way. Uh, he says, I never saw Ramtha do anything supernatural or extraordinary. He doesn't seem to have a very favorable view on Jay-Z. Uh, he says, Knight is a very charismatic person. You want to be around her until you get to know her. She's a drama queen. She likes to have drama in her life. So now when it comes to her husband, her ex-husband, Jeff, this is pretty sad. So he contracted HIV at some point. I'm not really sure when, like, I want to say it was probably likely after they got divorced or split up um, because there's no information saying that it was from her or that he gave it to her. Um, but basically he avoided treatment for it because he thought that Ramtha and the C&E, the consciousness and energy breathing techniques, would be able to treat and, and heal him. And so when you get HIV and you avoid treatment, that's not good. You need to get treatment for it so that it doesn't develop into AIDS. And unfortunately, that's what happened. In 1994, he ended up passing away from AIDS. I guess I'll say that his reason for not getting treatment is alleged. Okay, just to cover my bases, it's all alleged. So here's something pretty sketchy and just weird and gross. Um, so when Jay-Z was married to her previous husband, uh, Jeff Knight was a member of the school and he was apparently told by Ramtha, okay, Ramtha, anytime that Ramtha's talking, it's Jay-Z, <laughs> he's speaking through Jay-Z or whatever, but Ramtha apparently told Jeff that Jeff was Jay-Z's soulmate and that they basically, in order for both of them to be happiest in life, they needed to be together romantically. This was while Jay-Z was married to her previous husband, okay? So that is awful. <laughs> but I suppose Jay-Z and the guy ended up getting divorced and then she got married to Jeff. And then after Jeff died, I think that's when she got her third husband and then maybe the fifth, fourth, fifth, sixth. I, I doubt she was married six times, but like, I don't know. So if you remember earlier, the people who had shared that video of Jay-Z saying those really awful things, one of them was David McCarthy. So he's probably one of the most outspoken and well-known like former members who has interviewed multiple other former members. Um, he considers Jay-Z now to be a spiritual predator, he says. In an article from the Cult Inst Cult Education Institute by Carrie Brenner. She writes that he was ensnared in a web of intimidation and mind control at the school and brainwashed by the school's teachings into believing that the ancient figure Jehovah would return to Earth in a spaceship accompanied by a reptilian entourage. The lizard people were said to feast on human prey who did not follow under Ramtha's protection. He also claimed that a lot of people deny that these things happened, noting that the most esoteric Ramtha pronouncements were only revealed to a small inner circle. They say these are sacred teachings and that you, outsiders, wouldn't understand. So that's interesting. These are other alleged things, okay? Um, because apparently, like, like it says, he, a lot of the more just basic students in the movement didn't hear about these things, but I guess the more insiders, the higher-ups were told these could be true, could be false. So in my opinion, if I had to guess, I would say Jay-Z made up this character, Ramtha, for mainly monetary gain, but also I'm sure a little person personal gain, like wanting to feel special and different and superior and be like a leader and an authoritative figure. Um, just like medical medium and his buddy spirit of compassion want to be different and unique. Um, but I feel like this personally because of course I don't believe in like channeling and supernatural stuff like that. I also like Jay-Z claims that she is the unique channeler of Ramtha and she has literally gone to the extremes of suing people for claiming that they can channel Ramtha. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, Knight is fiercely protective of her kingdom. When a woman in Berlin, Germany, Judith Ravel, claimed that she was also channeling Ramtha, Knight took her to court and won the copyright to Ramtha's teachings. Later, after another woman, White Wind Weaver, 
who had attended a dozen events at RSE, imparted Ramtha's teachings in an event of her own, Knight sued her as well, and was awarded $10,000 in 2008. So that's so weird to win the copyright to an ancient warrior from Lemuria's teachings. It just is, it, it, may, it makes it sound like a made up storybook character. You know what I mean? Like if this was an actual person, why are you trying to get copyright on their teachings? She's copyrighted the name Ramtha. You, you like imagine if somebody copyrighted Jesus, copyrighted the Buddha, copyrighted Muhammad. She can copyright him because I think he's made up. He's a character for her little maybe cult, maybe just group. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this is not controversial. I'm sure most people like, are easily as entertained by this. Um, I would say I don't think this group is super dangerous. I have heard some reports about kind of like like, of course, people feel like they were brainwashed, like there was mind control, and that's not good at all. A lot of people can experience emotional uh, damage from this, and that's terrible. Um, but thankfully, it's not like people are being forced to live in this compound, and it's very hard to get out of. Um, a lot of people, like, it's, it's a worldwide type of community, school, and whatever. I feel like the worst things that have happened have, of course, been people believing that they can, like, cure certain diseases and then they don't, they die or whatever. I've also heard that there's just, there's these reports of them like walking around blindfolded through these obstacle courses and a lot of people had injuries. Some people were taken to the hospital because it's like really dangerous when you put like hundreds of people in this grass field with these different obstacles in the way. Not like an obstacle course, but just like random little metal or wood or whatever things spread out all over the place. People are gonna run into them because they're blindfolded. They're gonna run into other people. So that's kind of dangerous and I don't know what the, <laughs> what the point of that would be, but. So I felt like this was gonna be kind of a short video for my channel, but I feel like it's probably not gonna be that much shorter than, than average. Um, but like I said, I'm going to be talking about this more. I'm going to be talking about the forum, the lawsuits, uh, maybe some other things. I mean, maybe anything um, in my live stream on Patreon only uh, this Friday, 7 p.m. Central Time, July 22nd, 2022. So you can sign up if you would like. Otherwise, if you are really interested in me seeing or seeing me just like post another YouTube video on this publicly, I can definitely do that. Let me know if there's a lot of interest in it. Like I could definitely make a part two. Like there's just so much information, so much. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video and I would love if you share your thoughts down below. I'd love to know what y'all think about this subject. So yeah.